Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the conversation today on how to deal with trauma that's going to be hosted by Changing Lanes Africa and Simania Clinic. Trauma can be extremely stressful and disturbing. It can leave you feeling emotionally helpless and out of control, that feeling of numbness and disconnection. So today we're going to provide you with some self-help strategies so that you can speed up your healing process. When trauma comes or when it happens to you, you can feel stuck for a day, for a year, for a long period of time. But we hope that this webinar will assist you in actually moving forward with your life. So to further this discussion, we have three amazing speakers and two facilitators. We have Laurie Ham, who's a registered counselor. She's registered at the HPCSA. She is also currently doing her master's in psychology and has a deep desire to assist the community and assisting others. We have with us as well Lindor, who's an entrepreneur. He is a social work student, and he also runs groups to assist men who have suffered from GBV. Lastly, we have with us Nefriti Jade, who's an NLP coach. She is the chairperson of Changing Lanes Africa, and she's an artist, so very diverse, and currently working on creating a center for other artists and a space for them to heal. We also have with us Jay. He's our German side for this evening. Jay is the financial person on Changing Lanes Africa, the treasurer. And lastly, Dr. Libeko, who will assist us with the facilitation of this conversation. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Over to you, Laurie Ham. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Kim. Um, as I've already been introduced, my name is Lori Ham, and I will be very brief, I must say. So what I'll be talking about, I'll talk about what trauma is, I'll talk about the effects of trauma, and also give you some uh, strategies on how one can cope with um, trauma. So basically, when we talk about trauma, we have to understand that any person can actually experience trauma. It doesn't matter your background, where you come from, your age, anyone can actually experience trauma. So when we talk about trauma, we're talking about an emotional response to an event that is very disturbing, it's very devastating and very stressful. So if you experience trauma, um, it can leave you uh, feeling helpless, you know, it can threaten your, your, your coping strategies and it, it actually shatters your sense of security. So there are different uh, kinds of trauma. We have what we call acute trauma. We have what we call chronic trauma. We have complex trauma. So uh, basically um, acute trauma is a trauma that occurs from um, a single stressful event. So this can be your accident or maybe an injury or maybe if you were robbed um, or a sudden death of a loved one. And then we have what we call acute uh, uh, comp a chronic trauma. So this is where you have uh, you are exposed to multiple long-term or prolonged uh, distressing or stressful events. So this can be maybe you are living in a neighborhood where the crime rates are very high or maybe um, at home, there is violence. And also if you are constantly bullied, maybe at school or at work or wherever you go. And then we have what we call complex trauma. So complex tra trauma is when you are repeatedly being exposed to very multiple uh, traumatic events. So you find that maybe today you are, you are, you are, you are, you have, you are involved in an accident tomorrow you come across something else. So that is what we call, um, uh, complex trauma. And also we have to understand that um, if something is traumatic for me, it doesn't mean that it's going to be traumatic for someone else. So we have a uh, different definition of trauma. And also we have to understand that the way in which the factors that contribute to uh, the way in which you respond to trauma. So for example, if you, you experience trauma, whereas you already had a load of stress or you recently suffered a series of losses or you have been traumatized before or you have um, childhood trauma such as violence, 
you've been neglected or you grew up in an environment that is very unsafe then it means that um the effects might be long-term effects. So now I'll give you some, um, I'll mention some few effects of trauma. So the effects of trauma can take up to a few days, months, or even years. So um, the different, there's no much difference between the long-term and the short-term um, effects. It's just that if you don't deal with the short-term effects, they might um, take, um, they might be prolonged. So whenever you experience the symptoms of trauma, it means that you have to deal with them at an earlier stage, because if ever you don't deal with them, they might um, lead to what we call post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. And if these symptoms, the short-term uh, symptoms, if they last for more than a month that is when you can meet a criteria for PTSD and also these symptoms should um, interfere with your level of functioning meaning at work at school at home you are not able to to function now uh, some of the emotional or psychological symptoms can be shock so when you experience a traumatic event you can become shocked you can have a disbelief you can become irritated you can become angry you can tend to isolate yourself from other people you may feel helpless you may feel that you are not able to um, connect with other people and also you can be you can have a mood swings and then sometimes you can even have a difficulty in concentration and then now some of the physical symptoms that one can have especially immediately after experiencing the traumatic event you can actually uh, shake you know shaking after experiencing the traumatic event. And then sometimes you can have a difficulty in sleeping. You find that it's either when you go to sleep, you, you it's either you sleep late and wake up early or you sleep uh, early and still wake up early. So it affects your sleeping patterns. And also you can feel that you are tired most of the times. You can be easily settled. You know, you can have uh, concentration difficulties, whether it's at work, whether it's at school. And then sometimes you can frequently have uh, headaches, you know, uh, maybe muscle tension and raise a raising heartbeat. So basically, um, these symptoms, some of them can actually take a few minutes, some few hours, but one needs to make sure that you deal with the symptoms, because if you if ever you don't deal with the symptoms, they might be prolonged. And then I have um, now I'm going to talk about some coping strategies that you can use in order to cope with trauma. So I think it's very important for a person to understand that they have to, to, to keep moving. You mustn't be stuck in your trauma or whatever that you have experienced. It's very important for you to engage in activities. Exercise, you know, at least uh, per day, take some few minutes. You can do skipping, you can run, you can go to the gym just to make sure that you forget about uh, the trauma that you have experienced. And you can't be sitting down all day thinking Thinking about what you have experienced. Another thing that is very important is to not isolate yourself. Don't isolate yourself. Uh, talk to your friends, talk to someone that you trust, you know, and it's also very important for you to seek uh, for professional help. There are psychologists, there are trauma counselors. Go there, seek for help, because when you get to a counseling session, that is where you get to talk to someone who creates an environment that is very warm and safe. And also, I feel that comfort sometimes comes from uh, feeling engaged and accepted by others. And most of the time, psychologists psychologists and trauma counselors, they are people who are going to be non-judgmental. You know, there is what we call unconditional positive regard. They are going to accept you with your uh, with your symptoms, with whatever that you would be presenting to them. And then it's important for you to sometimes join a support group, maybe of some, some 
other people who have experienced trauma. You can join a support group where each and every person can be able to share their experience. And that will help you to realize that you are actually not alone. There are other people who went through what you went through and even worse. And also sometimes you can even volunteer to work because some people find a purpose in helping other people, in assisting other people. So it's important for you, especially if you are not working, you're not going to school, you might even find purpose in volunteering and also participate in social activities, community activities. And it's also important to have a balanced lifestyle. It's very important to take care of your health, meaning that you have to get enough sleep. Make sure that you get enough sleep because if you, you have enough sleep, it means that the following day you are able to, to, to concentrate and also your brain is able to work properly. And it's also very important for people to avoid substance use because if you you turn to substance substance will only help you to forget about the trauma for a short period of time but as soon as the the substance goes away it means that the problem or the trauma will come back and also if you turn to substance use in order to cope with your trauma it might lead to what we call substance use disorder so it's very important for you instead of turning into substance talk to someone and deal with your trauma in a proper way and also make sure that you you can also engage in relaxation uh, techniques and also um eating a healthy um, diet or having a balanced diet. So it's very important. So one thing that I, I, I have to say is that there is no right or wrong way to respond to trauma. It means that we shouldn't judge other people for the way in which they respond to trauma. So these people are just reacting normally to an event that is maybe abnormal. So like I said in the beginning that something can be traumatic for me, but for the next person, it might not be uh, traumatic. And also the way in which we respond will not be the same. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Laurie Ham. Um, I know that Lindo's recently experienced a bit of a traumatic event. I'd like to cross over to him to tell his story and then we can get inputs from Nefriti and Jay. Thank you so much, Lindo. Thank you, thank you so much for that. So, you know, in South Africa, because it is quite um, dangerous to live in South Africa, well, in certain parts, but what I experienced was that I was, I was, um, so I was coming from an event going home and I ordered a bolt to take me home. And what happened was, I think the bolt driver was traumatized because of the state of the country. And I'm also traumatized because of the state of the country. So when we got to my flat where I live at, instead of my bolt driver dropping me off, he saw two people that lived in the same flat. He saw two people standing outside my home. And then instead of dropping me off, he said to me, look, dude, don't do this to me. So I was like, what do you mean don't do this to me? And he was like, no, don't do this to me. So then he, 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 he hit a U-turn and then he drove off with me. In my mind and in his mind, I'm thinking that, okay, now this guy is going to kidnap me and I'm going to become a statistic. And in his mind, he's thinking that I'm going to hijack him. And the people standing outside of my house are thinking that now I'm going to go and rob them. So we're all now in shock. We all don't know what to do with the situation. So as my bull driver drives, drives off with me, I decide to jump out of the car because I did not know how to deal with that situation. I don't know where he's going to take me. I don't know if he's going to try and now like um, violate me because he thinks that I'm going to hijack him. So the best thing for me to do in that moment was to jump out of the car because I was trying to protect myself and preserve my own safety. So as I jumped out the car, I got scraped. I was literally hurt on the side of my body. And the, the ball driver just drove off. He stopped, he closed the door, and then he just drove off. And the people that were standing outside of my house, they ran inside the house instead of coming to help me and pick me up and dust me off. 
they were also scared of their lives because they thinking that now I'm part of this heist. So they r- ran inside the house. So I literally had to pick myself up, put back, put my uh, put on my shoes because my shoes even went off. Like it was like a whole incident. So my shoes got off. I had to put put my shoes back on, look for my keys. I got in my flat, and then what happened was. I, I just, um, I got home, I prayed because I was actually grateful to be alive. But that was also a way of me um, nullifying the trauma. So what happened was the next day, I just spent the whole day in bed. I was sleeping because I just thought that I was tired because of the events the previous night. So I spent the whole, the whole I think it was a Saturday. I spent the whole Saturday sleeping. I spent the whole Sunday sleeping. Until on Monday, that's when I started reaching out to people like, okay, um, look, I, I feel a bit down because now I was actually trying to connect with people and telling people my story. So I was telling people that, look, this is what happened to me. But luckily, I was speaking to a social worker and my social worker was like, um, because she's actually a friend of mine. So she told me to seek out a counselor because I am traumatizing. Signs of trauma is when you do isolate is when you do um, like isolate and you don't reach out to people, you don't speak to people and you actually don't look for help because the, the next day I didn't go to the police station. I didn't report the guy because I thought that this is South Africa. I didn't report him at Vault because I thought that this is South Africa. So I didn't do nothing about the situation. All I thought was that I just need to heal my physical body. And I thought I was resilient enough not to be traumatized. And then, I had to seek out a, a counselor and, and I actually did find a counselor, luckily for me. And I actually did go and report the police state, um, to report the case to the police station. But the police said that it's not a crime in South Africa to jump out of a moving car because I felt unsafe. So apparently to the police, it was the crime. So I didn't, I couldn't get a court case. And we sent a message to Bolt, Bolt didn't respond. So that was the situation. And I went to my counseling session and my counselor said something that quite was interesting to me. Um, as much as I was traumatized, I don't think it was severe because I really did try to establish, okay, how is this going to affect me? Because I didn't want it to affect me in the future. So I spoke to my counselor and she said that, look, you have to understand that just because you come out of a traumatic event doesn't necessarily mean that you are traumatized. And I was like, maybe I'm not traumatized. Um, but for the most part, when I re- did realize that I am traumatized was when I had to take another bolt going to the Khao train station. Because when I took my second bolt after that incident, I think it was on the Wednesday, I was quite, I was quite scared. I was, I was holding my bag on my, on my lap. I, was, I had everything just ready to jump out. And that's when I was like, okay, there's something, there's something here that I need to work on. So what I did was, I'm still having the sessions with my counselor. I'm still journaling about it. And that's literally how I'm dealing with that incident right now is to, is to journal, is to go on those exercises, is to eat healthy. And that's my experience right now. I'm still journaling about it. I'm still going through the, the, the process of healing. And hopefully at some point I will heal from the situation because I do feel some uneasiness when I do have to get in a boat. So I've used Uber now. Now I'm taking Uber. I've, it's a bit more expensive, but I've, I've swapped to Uber. So yes, that's my experience. Thank you so much, Lindo. I'd like to pass the floor over or hand over rather to Nefriti, who's going to tell us a bit more in terms of how coaching can assist with dealing with trauma and what she's done in the past to assist herself. Over to you, Nikki. There we go. Thank you so much, Kim, for the introduction and good evening and welcome all. Thank you for listening. So um, my take on trauma is a little bit different. I believe that trauma is the invisible force that shapes our lives. It shapes the way we live, the way we love, the way we make sense of the world. Um, It is the root of our deepest wounds. And for me, trauma is not what happened to you. It's what happens inside you. And that's a good thing, by the way, because if trauma is the fact that you were abused as a child 
or you were, for example, um, uh, Lindor's situation where he was, you know, taken in by the, um, and uh, traumatized by the, the driver of the bolt. You're never going to be a person who wasn't um, taken in by the bolt. Or if you're abused as a child, you're never going to be a, a person that was never abused. That thing that happened to you is always going to be there. Um, however, if you see it as what is happening inside of you, it can cue you to, to, to become more conscious in acknowledging that, yes, there's a wound that disrupted my vibrational frequency. Because when you are your authentic self and when you are happy and smiling, you are high vibrational. But when a trauma occurs, it, it nudges you out of that high vibrational state with such a jolt that you then end up in a lower vibrational state. And because it happened in such a quick way or because you know, the shock of the event is what causes you to, to meet or to fall into that lower vibrational state. So trauma can also be inflicted, not by what happens to you, but what doesn't happen to you that should happen. So that when your needs aren't met, that can wound you as well. So even though you weren't overtly hurt, you still wounded by not having your essential human needs met. So if trauma was a trauma of what happened to you, guess what? Like I said before, it's never gonna unhappen. But when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. And if we can, can start to look at trauma, the thing that happens inside of us, the wound that we sustained, then the meaning we made of it starts to shift. Um, the way you then come to believe certain things about yourself or the world or other people. Um, and if trauma was that disconnection from your authentic self, well, then guess what? There's good news. That can be restored at any moment. But the, the key is not is to shift your focus, is to look for the lesson. Okay, what did it teach me to be more vigilant, uh, to maybe be more conscious of my surroundings? And it's not about taking blame, but it's about... It's an empowerment mentality. So for example, I mean, and I've had plenty of trauma in my life. I can just share. I was, I was given away when I was three years old by my parents to my great grandparents. So that was a trauma, um, obviously being separated from my parents. And then, um, I mean, there were, there were lots of traumas. I ended up in foster care when I went back to my parents when I was like 13 years old. That was another trauma. I then got pregnant when I was 17 years old. And that was another trauma. Um, I was also abused as a child when I was seven years old. So there, there are, you know, and the way that I've kind of, um, how can I say, made peace with everything that's happened is I realized that it, it happened on the outside of me. And because I was shifted on the inside and focused on the, the shift on the inside, I started to stay in that lower vibrational state. But when I looked for the lesson and I asked myself, what is this teaching me? And how can I use what happened to me to, to help shift other people um, or to, to make the world a better place? Then suddenly, um, you know, things started to shift. It's, and exercise helps you in exactly the same way. Because when you start to exercise and when you start to move, you're no longer focusing on the thing that's making you sad. Um, in NLP, so uh, we use a technique called timeline therapy, and that's a really, really cool technique. Uh, in terms of resources, I would suggest that everybody go and look at Dr. Gabo Mate. He is absolutely amazing, and he's an expert on trauma. He's got many, many resources and videos, um, and he is just absolutely amazing. Um, and then, yeah, look for some timeline therapy. Also, auricular acupuncture is a very, very helpful method uh, for trauma release. And most importantly, there is a lesson for us all. And one we continue to learn is that we don't have to allow our trauma to define our lives or how we see ourselves or how we see the world or even how we relate to other people. Um, we can use it to, to shift us uh, to, to relate better to possibility and evil, even spiritual transformation. So yeah, I hope that was uh, helpful. Thank you so much, Dr. Kim. Thank you, Nikki. That was beautiful. Anything from yourself, Jen? 
Now I take the home chat. Uh, yeah, a little bit add on to in regards to coaching. So we heard about uh, from Loringham regards therapy. We heard from Nefriti again uh, from about coaching. Uh, one of the most important things I like to add is trauma is not a stigma. Trauma is not a weakness. Trauma is a challenge to our um, surrounding environment to really care and listen to us. So for me, this call, there's actually a call for trust and the call for the parents, for the grandparents, for the best friends, for the brothers and sisters. Observe your environment, observe, observe the others. If there's a change in habit, if there's a change in, in, in person's, people's behavior, very often it's rooted in trauma. And um, trauma is just not, as, as Nefriti also said, what happened to you um, or what you allow to happen inside of you. We also have some generational traumas. We have national traumas. We have collective traumas. We have ancestral traumas. So sometimes we have no clue why we are acting or reacting by, by this. But from the coaching um, base perspective, there are two root causes actually matter. You are either happy or you are angry. So if we look at the baby, it's either smiling or it's ah, shouting that uh, she, um, the baby needs awareness. Um, if, you, if you're not, um, uh, if you're not, you need getting met, you're getting sad. And if your, your, your sadness is suppressed, you're getting numb. And these are all indications for, for trauma. So for me, it's actually also to, to point out coaching is not therapy. Coaching is a careful opening and building relationship with your client to help and listen for the solutions. It's not coming with, this is what you have to do. It is, what actually, how do you feel? How, how can you move forward out of this? And um, yeah, that's maybe the only thing that I'd like to add to what Nefridi already said. Thank you so much, Jay, for that dynamic output as well. Dr. Libeko? All right. Um... Thank you very much uh, for everyone's contribution towards uh, this interesting, but quite sensitive topic. So I just want to maybe direct a question to Loriham, uh, but everybody can, can take it on. So in, it is, there's this um, African stigma um, about you know, differences between how we handle drama as males and females. So from the male part, we, we, we tend to bottle stuff inside. We tend not to, to express these traumatic events and also not to report. And I think society has in the past, I think it's probably changing now, but it has in the past constructed that, that whole scenario where males find it very hard to, to engage in how they feel and you know, the experiences in terms of traumatic events. And you know what? What sort of support structures exist out there, and how are we as a as communities changing that landscape to be able to be more accommodating to the males or to the boy child to be able to speak out and and you know express themselves? Okay, thank you for the question. Does anyone maybe wants to answer the the question? Maybe we can kick off with a comment from Jay, followed by Lindo. How can a boy child better express himself or where can they actually find areas where they can provide feedback in terms of how they're feeling, regardless of this notion that men or boys are not able to feel trauma? How do they engage with that? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. I think we have to learn to, to overcome the, the idea that um, men always have to be strong um, and, and women can, can share their, their, their feelings. Um, you see from the, from the heritage or from the ancestry, the boys or the men were there to fight uh, and protect the women and the tribe. Um, I think every growth is can be found in being vulnerable and this is for men definitely something that is, seems to be more difficult to learn and um it's 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 a, it's a really challenging question um 
it's it lays and it's it's probably what what again we have to say it's, it's a call to the parents and to the grandfathers to overcome this this stigma and help them to say hey whenever there's something wrong start to speak about it whenever you feel you can't deal with this um let me share one example we we had an intervention in lavender hill quite a few years ago where we dealt with gangsters um who needed also trauma therapy um so no matter where we look but what we realized here in this event is that um, they can't express their emotions. So we used painting um, or art as an expressing for emotions because they don't have words. And if you don't have words to express your emotions, what do you do? You, you become aggressive. Um, so we have to understand that if, 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 if there's no word for it, there's still an emotion for it. So you have to start to express your emotions and, and find a group of people who are listening to it. And maybe Lindo is maybe here the better person to ask um, because he's, he's, he's um, dealing with other men in the group. So how does men, do men support each other is maybe the question rather to Lindo in opening a support group. But um, for the call is also maybe for me to the brothers of the brothers to say, um, it's not about cars and sports and alcohol, listen to each other and, and find common sense to not only just hang your ego out, but rather to listen to also the wounds. That's maybe mm -hmm. my comment. Thank you, Jay. Lindo? You on mute, Lindo? Lindo? Yeah. Okay, so I was saying that I agree with you, Jay, because especially in South Africa and in the African community, you know, we, 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 counseling has been stigmatized. We, we don't really believe in psychology because of what psychology has firstly done to um, South Africa politically. So we don't really go to counseling and we don't really believe in that um, practice. But that's something that we need to um, normalize in South Africa, especially amongst the African community, because doing that will actually then allow men in specific, not just women, but also men to be able to identify emotions and know what emotions they're feeling, especially when it comes to children and helping them understand what emotion they're feeling and what emotions are at a young age. Because a lot of things, um, as, as grown-ups, or by the time they, they, the men, um, boys go to the age of 20, um, 19, they have all of this trauma that is sitting inside their bodies, but they don't know how to identify it. They don't know what it is. They just feel so much anxiety, but they don't know what's going on. So the more we can start identifying that this feeling comes from this experience, and when this happens, you're reacting from this, that's how I, I feel we can we can especially help assist um boy children in the country is to um help them go to therapy for one and to teach them how to speak up because like how jay was saying men aren't taught how to speak we taught how to be strong and that as well can hinder us because a good way to to release trauma for me is through crying and after i've cried i, I just feel so much better i'm ready to tackle the world but if you don't do that, if you don't have the space to do that, you're just gonna, it's, you just, it's just gonna be kept in the body and eventually it will explode. So I think that's, that's, that's my take. All right, um, thank you very much um, for, for, for that contribution. So I think we've got about three minutes or just under three minutes to wrap up. I just wanna get us into this 40 minutes. Otherwise, we're going to have an extra five minutes, so it's not going to be very profitable. So I just want to, to thank everyone for you know, such a, a tremendous contribution to this topic. And uh, I will spend like a minute or so just to summarize what we have learned uh, today. So basically, Loreham took us through uh, an overarching topic, which is trauma. And she gave us you know, what the definition of trauma is. And also she gave us um, an indication of, of the different types of trauma. It can be something that's acute, it can be something that accumulates over time. And she gave us uh, a snapshot of what the after effects look like of, of the trauma and also the coping mechanisms and mm -hmm. how to deal with this trauma and how to, you know, just to cope um, going forward. And I think Nikki gave such a, a, a life-changing scenario in terms of, you know, 
saying trauma makes you who you are. You know, you can't, you cannot be untraumatized. So you need to be able, you know, to live with that state and be able to deal with that, that, that parameter of life and be able to learn from it. I know it's very hard, it's very difficult and it's very sore. But I think if we change our perspective about the incidents or the things that happen to us, we become better people, even in those tough situations. So I think it was quite, it was quite a deep. And Jay, um, you know, mentioned, you know, these this types of trauma, things like, you know, this can be generational trauma. It can be a recurrent type of trauma. And it can also even mm -hmm. be, you know, religious or ancestral. So all these things contribute to, you know, you know the, the scenario of, of just having traumatic experiences in our lives. And I think today's talk was really awesome. It, it, you know, it brought about different perspectives about how to deal with trauma, how to, you know, how to just cope. So I thank everyone for their contributions. Dr. Lamont, you've got about 30 seconds to, to wrap up. Thank you everyone for your participation. I think this talk really provided a dynamic display of how each person can deal with trauma. I'll leave you with a quote. It's from Peter Levin. It says, trauma is a fact of life. It does not, however, mean that it is a life sentence. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening further. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>